Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com. Our year-end member campaign is underway at St. Louis Public Radio. Your support makes podcasts like We Live Here, Cut and Paste, and The Gateway possible. Donate online at stlpublicradio.org or at 314-516-4000. From the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Wednesday, December 9th. I'm Wayne Pratt. Some Missouri election officials and lawmakers want to eliminate the state's list of excuses to request an absentee ballot and instead allow early voting for any reason. It isn't a political issue. It shouldn't be a political issue. It it is about a foundational right that's enshrined in the Constitution. In just a few minutes, St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum reports on the debate about making Missouri a no-excuse absentee state. The spike in coronavirus cases in our region is prompting more residents to get tested. St. Louis Public Radio's Eric Schmidt reports some St. Louisans are choosing to do that in Illinois. It may seem out of the way, but for some St. Louisans, the testing options in Illinois are more convenient than those in Missouri. Billy Brown is a graphic designer in South St. Louis. He says he and his wife were tested in East St. Louis before they saw relatives for Thanksgiving. My wife and I did a lot of research on what is the best and safest option, especially for two people who don't think they have it. The Jackie Joyner Kersey operation, from what we had heard, was super smooth. The state-run operation in East St. Louis has since moved to St. Clair Square in Fairview Heights to accommodate more people. St. Clair County health officials say it's open for anyone and doesn't require an appointment. I'm Eric Schmidt, St. Louis Public Radio. St. Louis health officials say they have the ability to store Pfizer's COVID vaccine safely. Doses must be kept at minus 94 degrees Fahrenheit. While big hospitals have that capability, smaller facilities like local federally qualified health centers, do not. City Health Director Fred Eccles says his department has secured super-cold storage facilities for those centers, which are key to distributing the vaccine. Federal regulators could approve Pfizer's vaccine this week. Eccles says the first doses could be in St. Louis before Christmas. Missouri school children will likely have to take standardized assessments in the spring, but the state will not measure district performance based on those results. The State Board of Education has decided tests should be given to measure student progress during the pandemic. But member Pamela Westbrooks-Hodge says the Education Department could come off as tone-deaf to parents' concerns if it requires testing. And so how do we create a win-win that gets the state the data that it needs to take action and develop a strategy, but addresses the concerns that we're hearing? Education Commissioner Margie Van Dieven canceled last year's standardized testing in the spring shortly after schools closed. A majority of public school children are still learning from home. Community members and alumni are pushing back on a plan by St. Louis Public Schools to close 11 schools. St. Louis Public Radio's Ryan Delaney reports. Most notable of the schools on the closure list is Sumner High School. It opened in 1875 as the first high school for African Americans in the West. But the school now educates only 200 students in a building built for 1,000. Sumner, like others on the list, has been targeted for closures before. The district has lost 90,000 students in 50 years. Superintendent Kelvin Adams says the consolidation plan is about the future. We really should be shifting the conversation from closing schools to providing greater services for our students. Adams says fewer buildings will allow him to hire more nurses and social workers and offer more courses and internships. The school board is scheduled to meet December 15th to vote on the plan. I'm Ryan Delaney, St. Louis Public Radio. The pandemic prompted Missouri lawmakers to temporarily expand absentee voting. But with those changes going away at the end of the year, some election officials and lawmakers want to permanently overhaul the system, including allowing voters to request an absentee ballot for any reason. St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum reports. 
Before 2020, if voters wanted to receive an absentee ballot, they had to check off a specific excuse, such as being out of town for Election Day or being physically incapacitated. But on the final day of the 2020 session, Missouri lawmakers added either having or being susceptible to COVID-19 as an acceptable excuse. And they created the mail-in ballot that can be obtained for any reason, but had to be sent through the mail and had to be notarized. Henry County Clerk Rick Watson, a Republican, says lawmakers should keep things simple going forward. They don't need an excuse. Just come in and vote. Just get it done. We work so hard to get people registered. I don't know why we can't make it easier for them to cast their ballot. There are a number of reasons why local election officials and lawmakers want to allow Missourians to request absentee ballots for any reason. For one thing, a lot of other states, like Illinois, don't require an excuse. And as Democratic State Representative Wiley Price of St. Louis noted, there's really no way to prove that a person is telling the truth about why they're voting absentee. You make a no excuse for people don't have to lie to the government to involve themselves in the democracy. Lawmakers from both parties have pre-filed bills for the 2021 legislative session to make Missouri a no excuse absentee state. Democratic Senator Lauren Arthur of Kansas City is hoping the GOP-controlled legislature embraces the idea, especially since the considerable uptick in absentee voting this year didn't really help her party gain meaningful ground. It isn't a political issue. It shouldn't be a political issue. It, It is about a foundational right that's enshrined in the Constitution. One of the people that could have a big say in the upcoming debate is Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft. He says he's not a fan of expanding the ability to vote through the mail, but he says he is willing to entertain discussions about expanding in-person absentee voting where somebody goes to an election authority location before Election Day and casts a ballot. We want people voting in person as much as possible. Now, we may see some suggestions that we make it harder to to vote absentee by mail, but we make it easier for people to vote absentee in person. There may be some trade-offs there, and and I'm willing to look at that. Another sticking point could be whether absentee ballots need to be notarized. Ashcroft says he's a supporter of notarization. We have substantially better confirmation that the individual who was supposed to cast the ballot did when there is a third party that validates their identification and puts their notary stamp on that, signs and dates it. But State Representative-elect Betsy Fogel says voters found the notary requirement for some absentee ballots to be confusing. The Springfield Democrat also said the requirement was counterproductive in trying to prevent voters from coming into contact with people who had COVID-19. Getting something notarized required um, interaction with with one another. So I think it was counterintuitive to the initial point of uh, loosening our absentee voting It's not a sure thing that changes to Missouri's absentee ballot system will make it through the legislature. After all, the demand to vote early may go down before 2022 if impending vaccines send the COVID-19 pandemic into the dustbin of history. And prior efforts to turn Missouri into a no-excuse absentee ballot state haven't gotten much traction in the legislature. Still, St. Louis County Democratic Elections Director Eric Fay says the monumental attention absentee ballots received during the past election cycle may prompt lawmakers to take the issue more seriously. The, the legislature has not had much appetite for election and administration reform lately. So I don't know that I hold out a lot of hope, but if there's any chance, it, it should probably be this session because, you know, it's it's front of everybody's mind after the presidential election. Lawmakers will gavel into session in early January when the presidential contest will still be fresh on Missourians' minds. Whether the issue of making Missouri a no-excuse absentee ballot state can stay relevant before legislators depart in May will be a big storyline to watch next year. I'm Jason Rosenbaum, St. Louis Public Radio. Our Fred Ehrlich edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio, music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. I will be out for the rest of the week. Ryan Delaney and Shayla Farzan will be filling in. From the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway.
Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com.